This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Monero.com Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero safely on iOS and Android too. Monero.com Wallet is open source and you always control your own keys. And by IVPN. Resist online surveillance with IVPN, a privacy-focused audited and transparent VPN provider that accepts Monero directly. Monero.com Wallet and IVPN are trusted and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you. And supporting us is easier than ever by typing in our YAT free speech money into your Monero.com or Cake Wallet send address field to send us a tip. This week on Monero Talk. Doug and I headed off to Freedom Fest 2022 in Las Vegas, Nevada. We were happy to report yet again that it was a huge success. We served up fresh, gratuitous pour-overs this time and spoke to tons of freedom fighters about Monero, the importance of privacy, and true digital cash. Once again, thank you to Monero.com for helping fund part of our trip and the funds they provided for giveaways. It was truly a hit. Many were excited to receive a $10 Monero tip on the spot. Lots went on during this short trip, so please stay tuned for all the wonderful and interesting content. Douglas Tuman interviews Michael Cobb, Chairman and CEO of ECI Development at Freedom Fest 2022. This special edition of Monero Talk starts now. back at Freedom Fest talking to, actually not talking to that many people because every conversation just takes so long, so it's hard to move on to the next person. Right, right. Uh, Mike has been across from me the entire time, but yeah. I think we, we have yet to do the interview. It's true, but you have provided me with a cup of coffee already, so thank you, and I'm here for, for the number two, which is this tremendous coffee. Doug, you guys, you guys are nailing it. Thank you, Matt. So we're going to brew you up right now as we have this interview. Can you give us a, a quick pitch on what it is you guys are, are up to? What are you doing while you're at Freedom Fest, the whole, the whole spiel? Well, sure. So why we're at Freedom Fest is slightly different from our primary business, right? But why we're here is we have a fundamental belief that if you do not have a second residency outside your home country, you are effectively a prisoner in your country. You can't leave. I mean, you can leave, but you can't stay out, right? I mean, you know, whatever. So, so we help people find a way to get a second residency to really give themselves freedom insurance, personal freedom insurance, protecting the most important asset we have, which is us. And our core business is building resort communities in Latin America and Portugal. And and residency is a key component to that. If you buy a home in Portugal or, or Costa Rica or wherever, you need to be able to stay there, right? It's your home. You want to live there. So you need a residency. And so at Freedom Fest, we've just kind of flipped it around and said, well, the purpose here is your residency. Maybe you get a residence, a home. Maybe you don't. Many people pick up a second residency without actually a residence, which is okay too. So here it's about freedom as opposed to the product. Uh, most of our core business is actually building homes and condominiums, resort communities uh, for digital nomads now and, and folks that want to live south of the border. Amazing. So, so how did you get into this? Did you start off as you know helping freedom-loving individuals get additional residencies or was it that you were always uh, on the developer side of things? Yeah, so we started on the developer side with retirees and pre-retirees looking to own property overseas. Then we, uh, be, but again, because the residency component was part of that, we started, I, I, in fact, I'll go way back. I, I knew Mark Skousen from his fee days. I actually uh, helped the Oxford Club run their chapter meetings and some of their conferences, and Mark was one of my speakers. So I would get Mark to come out and speak at the conferences and the various events. I got to know Mark over the years. I've always been a freedom-loving guy, uh, well, since college anyway. Uh, and, and so just it was a good personal connection, philosophical, fun, collegial connection. And then when he started up Freedom Fest, we become, uh, became sponsors and speakers here and have for, I guess, eight of the 
11, something like that. Almost all of them we've been here and been a part of. Uh, but, but yeah, the freedom component is the big component here. The residency component, that freedom insurance by having a residency outside your home country is the lead here. But a lot of people, once they get a residency overseas, they, they want to have a home overseas too, so they can enjoy that, you know, that expat lifestyle. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure there's a lot of people that would like to use crypto to, to purchase that that new home somewhere. Uh, Doug, funny you would say that coming out of Monero. Um, you know, yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, we we were th the first developer to take crypto. We took our first uh, Bitcoin transaction a little over five years ago now, uh, and we got known in the industry as a as a company that would take crypto for real estate. I, I don't get it, honestly, Doug. I don't get it. Why wouldn't you take crypto for? Uh, for for anything, right? As a means of transaction, right? It's, it's silly. Like I got money, I want to use it. Yeah, right, right. No, I don't want your money. Yeah, nuts, nuts. <laughs> right. Okay, nuts. But anyway, but but we have, we did, and uh, last year about 15% of our transactions occurred in crypto. Uh, so so I love what you guys are doing. I love getting the the utility of Monero out there. I think so many coins. I mean, they're just speculative. I mean, there's there's all kinds of pump and dump and all kinds of nonsense going on in the crypto, right? And and any new field has that at the beginning. And, and so uh, the utility of Monero, actually what you guys are doing with the Guatemalans, right? You have this ability, you buy the coffee from you guys and then you want to tip the Guatemalan farmer. You, know, you send them 50 cents or a dollar, it costs a penny, whatever it costs, right? I mean, so now you've taken Monero and made it transactional in an important way. It gives it utility. And, and so for us, the utility of crypto is fundamental. And, and so, yeah, we, we, we love it. In fact, uh, Mike Peterson has asked us to build his Bitcoin beach community for him in El Salvador for the Bitcoiners. And, and we're really excited about that because for the first time in the world, there will be a physical community for what has heretofore been a online community of, of, of crypto loving folks. And so we're really, really excited to, to be at the forefront of that, yeah. What else can you tell us about that project? Uh, uh, right now, not a lot. We are in the uh, permitting stages. We went through the first stages of permitting to get it zoned from agricultural to residential, so that has happened. Uh, we've hired the engineering firm to do all of the water, sewer, roads, uh, telecommunications infrastructure so that we can submit that for environmental and construction permits. Uh, we should have retail product announcements sometimes towards the end of this year, early next year, with construction starts maybe 12 to 16 months from today. And who bought the land for that? I'm just, just curious. Uh, uh, Mike Peterson. He bought the land many, many years ago. Uh, he saw me at the Bitcoin conference. I was speaking at the Bitcoin conference last summer. He approached us because we've been in the development business for 26 years in Central America for 26 years. And, and so he understood that we could help him build the community that he envisioned for his Bitcoin community. Uh, and so now it's a partnership. It's a joint venture, basically. I love it. Amazing. And, now. And when are we doing one for Monero? Exactly. That's, that's, that's what I was going to get at. Got, guys, when are we doing this? We got the guy. Now we and, and, and maybe we do it in Guatemala, okay? Why not? Why not? Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, Antigua is a beautiful, beautiful city and uh, or town. I don't know. Is it a city or a town? I'd call it a... Uh, I think it's a, si a town. I think it's a town. town. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Whatever it is, it's gorgeous. And so, uh, anything we would do up in the coffee-growing areas of Guatemala would be just spectacular. In fact, that part of the world I call the tropical highlands, and 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 how I refer to it is springtime all the time. I mean, it's springtime all the time. And so, we would love to do a, a community for Monero-loving folks in Guatemala, maybe tie it into a coffee plantation so people could have coffee estates. We've dreamed of doing this in Costa Rica. We've never found the right partner. But for us to have a piece of property where we would build homes in and around a coffee plantation, right, wouldn't that be special? Yeah, it would be amazing. How about this idea of like trying to like crowdsource it among the Monero community, like kind of people paying in advance to to subsidize the kickstart the development of something like that. Yeah, sure. And 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 so I, I think the key to something like that is to somehow escrow the money, right? So if the deal doesn't happen, everybody gets their money back, right? And and that's really important. I mean, again, we've been in business 26 years for us, you know, 26 years of reputation, and we've delivered on everything we said we would do for 26 years. And so if we did a crowdfunding, crowdsource funding, something like that, yeah, let's get the money, or the Monero, well, let's, you know, whatever, let's get the currency into an escrow of some kind, then we can go shopping for the property, we know how much we have, we can say, okay, we need X amount for the property, we need to do the infrastructure, blah, 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 then we can execute, right? 
So yes, I think that's a great way to come at it with the right protections in place for the folks who initially fund up the crowdfunding. Mm, now, you, now you got me thinking, now you got me thinking. Good. Uh, how about in terms of people today, like transacting with crypto for purchases of, of buying properties, are you seeing a lot of usage with it? Um, yeah, last year about 15%. So I'm, I'm sure it's the highest of any developer in Central America. It's probably one of the highest of any developer in the U.S. as well. In fact, it's interesting because overseas we're not stuck with the kinds of regulatory BS that I think U.S real estate transactions, I mean, you have to go through a lawyer and an escrow agent and a title company, and blah, 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 right? And so all of a sudden, you've got a lot of friction, you've got a lot of resistance, institutional resistance. Because look, at the end of the day, crypto is going to put a lot of middlemen out of business, right? Title companies. I mean, when the title goes on the blockchain, who, why do you need title insurance, right? And escrow agents. So I mean, a lot of those kinds of things, I think they're fearful of. So there's an, an, an inherent resistance to this on a forward movement of crypto in real estate transactions in the U.S. There's some regulatory issues too, right? Overseas, you don't have that. You don't have a title insurance. You don't have escrow agents, right? And so all of a sudden, the crypto becomes a much more valid and protected way to do a transaction. It's very transparent for, for all parties, always, the whole day. So, so there are a lot of advantages to crypto overseas that would, I guess, still be advantages in the U.S., but the resistance, institutional resistance is, is preventing it. So I think more and more of our business will be crypto in the future. Yeah, I mean, most people that, I, you know, that I've spoken to that have used crypto to, to purchase real estate or something, really what they're doing is they're selling their crypto into the dollar and then making the purchase. But you're saying, like, people are, like, straight up making the real estate deal with you and then sending you crypto from their yep. wallet to your wallet yep. and the transaction is complete. Yep, their wallet to our wallet. Yep, exactly. Now what are like the, are there, I guess it depends on the country, but like what are what are some of the common things that you need to go through as, as a customer? I mean, um, are, is there a question as to, you know, where, where the funds came from? You know, if I wanted to, you know, buy a million dollar property off of you with Monero directly, I mean, what, what's, what's the typical process that, that um, takes place? You know, I mean, there's a full KYC, right? I mean, so the, the, the know your client, the uh, UBO, underlying beneficial owner, I mean, all of those pieces are part of the transaction. And, and I know Monero is the secrecy, you know, coin, right? Or it's one of them, but it's probably the most important one, right? And, and, and for that reason, I think a lot of times people imagine, oh, I'm just going to do this transaction and, you know, but, but if you're actually buying a piece of property, all of that information has to come out in the transactional purchase to be a bona fide purchaser, right? And so a lot of what I would say the, 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 the privacy piece of Monero specifically, right, is evaporated in the process of buying a piece of property. It just... Like you can't buy a piece of property anonymously. It doesn't work, right? Sure. And so, because the country wants to have a copy of your passport, blah blah blah. So, so, but it's easy. I mean, the KYC process is the same for the transaction, whether you're buying in cash or Monero or Bitcoin. It doesn't matter, right? All of that's out and transparent. So it's actually pretty easy. KYC, you know, fill out the paperwork, and then you become the owner. But it is a wallet-to-wallet -wallet transaction. That's exactly what it is your wallet to my wallet in crypto, and then the physical title then becomes yours to the property. And how about taxes? I mean, what are some of the more friendlier uh, places to buy to buy direct with crypto, to buy real estate direct with crypto? Well, you know, that that's a great question. I mean, as a U.S. citizen, you're a U.S. citizen, I'm a U.S. citizen, you know, we are taxed on our worldwide income, right? So there's almost no tax advantage to any country in the world uh, uh, as a U.S. citizen. So I would say that all of our transactions are generally tax neutral. They don't, there's no... Right, it would have to be like I, I move to wherever and, and start to gain the benefits of, of living there, being a residence, resident there, and then maybe maybe then I, I make the transaction and then I'm, I'm gaining from the no capital gains, for example. Uh, that is a possibility. Again, you'd want to consult with a U.S. tax attorney, you know, an accountant or whatever, um, because those are very, very specific rules. Do you guys um, offer that advice too or avenues to, to learning about that? Um, w not really. Uh, it, again, w we can refer folks to several attorneys, tax accountants, those kinds of people that work in the offshore space because, I mean, we know them, they know us, right? We don't do it, but we can give you two or three names of people. You go out, you see, and understand it. Because, look, at the, at the end of the day, the penalties for doing it wrong are severe. Big fines, 
potential jail time, <clears throat> right? I mean, it's serious business, right? And so if you're going to do that transaction and there's a tax component that you care about, get the advice up front, follow that advice, and, and, and obey the law. Because otherwise, you know, you, again, penalties are stiff, so... Awesome. Well, we, 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 I feel like we ended on a, on a low note there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, no, well, you know, but, but, but look. Come the, on, it's Freedom Fest. It is Freedom Fest. But you know what? The law is the law, right? The law is the law. And, and look, you ran for Congress. I mean, right? And so, you know, for, for us, we're about trying to change the law. We're trying to live our lives. But, but to, to, to break the law is highly risky, right? And, and the penalties are severe no matter what that is, right? And so, look, obey the law. Try to change the law. Let's be free individual actors. Let's do everything we can. But there's so much wonderful... Uh, on the up note, right? There's so much wonderfulness about being an expat. I lived in Nicaragua. I moved there with my wife and my two-year-old daughter in 2002. We had another little daughter who came along. We lived in Nicaragua for 14 years. I raised two beautiful daughters in Nicaragua. We had an incredible quality of life. Uh, the cost of living is inexpensive. The people are wonderful. And, and, and that's what brings people to the region. I would say there are two reasons people expat. One is running away, right? Maybe it's a divorce or, you know, whatever. People are running away, right? That's a small percentage of the people who move overseas. The other reason is people are running towards quality of life, better weather, great friends, uh, intentional communities like a Bitcoin community uh, or, or freedom-loving communities. We, we build, we have a very much freedom-loving community right now at our Grand Pacifica. Uh, and, 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 and about, I think we have about 80 some homes under construction and I'm gonna say 60 of those homes, three quarters of those homes came from conferences like this with freedom-loving individuals. And so now all of a sudden you have this community of people who, like us, get it, want it, strive to make it happen. And, and so it's, a, it's an intentional community of people that you would enjoy being around and, and folks watching this would likewise. And a lot of them are in the crypto space. That was a lot of where our 15% of our transactions came from last year was this particular group of homes in this community. And so lots of great reasons to go overseas. Uh, and, uh, and, and I look forward to working with you on a Monero community, uh, maybe in Guatemala, it doesn't have to be there, but somewhere. I think that's an intentional community that would really love to go from the virtual space, which is where you all are on the radio and stuff like that, right? To a physical place where we can all go have a beer together. We can go jam. People, I mean, we see this. People get together, they, they play instruments, they have a jam session, right? I mean, like, this is what community is, right? Or go surfing or swim. Well, you're not going to surf in the mountains. But anyway, you know, go hike in the mountains or whatever it is, right? But a real community of people who love to be with one another. The Monero community is exactly that. And, uh, uh, and I look forward to working with you, Doug, to figure out how it, how it can happen. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the goal is to create uh, parallel economies, yeah. you know, Monero circular uh, communities where people are transacting in Monero, living off Monero. So that is certainly one way to bring that to, you know, Absolutely. actualization. Well, I look forward to working with you. On All right, cheers, man. Thank you so much. And I look forward to that cup of coffee. Yeah, it's ready. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to our show on YouTube, Odyssey, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Go to MoneroTalk.live to subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.